Hey guys, and welcome back to Legos Island. So today it is Monday, October 21st, 2024. And as you guys can see, Legos Island Halloween 2024 has arrived. And we'll be going from October 21st all the way to November 4th. So it is a 14 day long event, unlike 2023, where it was only like nine days. This is five days longer. Anyway, with that out of the way, Let's jump right into the event. So today we're actually going to be doing something a bit different here. As you can see, I got Cool Cat 33 and Jack Lantern right here. Allow me to explain why. Jack Lantern should be extremely obvious. We're showcasing a Halloween event here. But Cool Cat 33 is actually a lot more interesting. You see, for those unaware, back in February for the finale of Operation Legos Island 2024, we saw the corrupted future, which looked absolutely dark and mysterious and mostly creepy. With that in mind, Cool Guy 33 would later post a comment saying the corrupted future would be a good Legos Island Halloween design. And I said, oh indeed. And now, eight months later, we have taken that idea into full consideration. So you can thank Cool Get 33 for the idea for this year's theme and why the island looks like this. That can explain why I'm bringing him along too. This means we're not gonna be going to the dispensers to choose a dog, as these two will be the ones that will be joining alongside me. With that now all out of the way, let's officially jump right into the tour. Now that I have everything all cleared up. Starting off with the port, as we can see, it looks like this, which has a ton of pumpkins around it. A lot of them, actually. And there's also a free item here. However, as you can see, though, it's actually not available until October 28th, which is not for like another seven days. I will show you where today's free item is later, as it's actually really clever. That may or may not actually explain why there's a hole right there with a vine coming out of it. And no, that's not where it's located. It's somewhere else. Anyway, though, the port honestly does look really cool. Now, you may notice that I did actually keep the idea of keeping the lights in the island after the events of the lights experiment because not only did cool guy 33 think of this cool corrupted future halloween idea he also was the one that suggested that the lights should that can explain why the subway looks like this with the lights flickering on and off like so as you can see the entire counter here has been transformed into pumpkins with most of the four being crying obsidian. Scratch that, that's pretty much this entire event. Much like how the corrupted future was back in February. But now we've made it into a cool Halloween theme. With all that in mind, the subway does look very, very cool. Next up is the underground party room, and I'm actually going down here next for actually a reason. But before we do, this is how it looks here on and here on the inside going down here. Hopping down uh, right here, we can see that it has been once again decorated. However, there is a vine sticking out of the floor, which I will get to in a minute. As you can see, this is how the room looks, and it actually looks really, really cool. It's similar to the original Corrupted Future design, but now with cobwebs and pumpkins. Heading over to the other rooms, I can actually say that they're actually decorated. My god, it feels like these rarely get decorated nowadays. But yep, they're decorated. And here too. Just no Halloween decorations, just their original Corrupted Future designs. Yep. Pretty much that. Only with the exception of the flowers. And that's all. Now, there is a reason that this is here. Heading down here, the corruption hole from Operation Legos Island 2024 is still here by Evil Cluck. But now, as you can see, we actually have pumpkins down here. And that is also where we're going to find our first item. The corrupted Halloween hat. Let's pick it up and let's put it on. This is how it looks, although it is pretty dark in here, so let me show you via the inventory. As you can see, this is how it looks. And I'm proud to announce that there is a full-on armor set for this that will be unlocking within the first four days of the party. 
Now, what's actually really cool is that the first four items of this party will be unlocking in their respective corruption holes in the order that we saw them back in Operation League Without in 2024. So for example, since this was the first corruption hole we saw back in Operation League Without in 2024, this is where the first item is located. However, for the sake of this tour, we will be visiting them all in random order. And more importantly, because they all don't unlock until later today, which we will see later. So that can explain why this is here too. Let's head down there while we're at it. Now normally this is the maze entrance, however, during Operation League Without in 2024, it has been transformed into a corruption hole. And this is where the October 24th item is available, which is the corrupted Halloween shoes. We have to come back on Thursday to be able to collect it. However, there's not going to be a video that day for Legos Island, so we'll come back on Friday to collect it. Now that this has all been cleared up, let's continue the tour. Next up, we're going to go over to the balcony, which as I just stated earlier, we do not need to do anything about the dispensers here, so we can automatically progress. As you can see, despite all the lights still being here, it still looks really cool. As you can see, we got pumpkins here, here, and here. And you may also notice that the lights leading into my cave have also changed as well, which is really cool. And you'll also notice in there, the lights have also changed here too, reflecting the respective design, where they flicker in on and off just like we saw during the light experiment on October 17th. The rest of this, however, looks really cool and reflects the corrupted future design, but with some very fun Halloween decorations, as you can see right here. It honestly looks super cool. And honestly, Cool Game 33 is not wrong. The, the Halloween decorations fit so well with this design. So I'm... Honestly, not surprised that he wrote that comment back then. Honestly, so far, this does, the Halloween decorations fit so well. I can see why he thought that this was a good idea. And honestly, I do personally agree. The event room is also decorated with even more Halloween decorations, such as more cobwebs and pumpkins. And more importantly, way more crying obsidian. However, this is the only room in the event room to be decorated as if we go to the other rooms, such as free item room three, and then free item room one in there, and two over there, as you may notice, they are not decorated. So we can automatically move on. Oh, and this isn't decorated either, so yeah, we can move on. Next up is the lodge, which as you can see, has a ton more decorations. A ton of pumpkins right here, and we also have a free item, the Corrupted Halloween Banner. However, that is not available until October 25th, which yes, there is an episode that day. So, with all that being said, we will come back in four days for that. Anyway, in the meantime, the cobwebs here actually replace the nether brick fences that were actually seen back in the original Corrupted Future design, which is actually really cool as it makes it much more spooky for Halloween, which is super cool. Also, some redstone um, ores, the deep slate ones, also can be seen as a minor difference as well. I actually forgot to show you it over here too, but yeah, that's a thing as well. Now, heading into the lodge itself is actually interesting. Let's see if I can get these two in here for a second. There we go, or at least one of them. Anyway, the lodge, as you can see, is decorated once again. Which has cobwebs and pumpkins all over the place with even more crying obsidian. What's even cooler is that if we go down to the basement, it is also updated for this party too. Which is actually really cool. It's mainly just more crying obsidian, pumpkins, and cobwebs respectively. But that's completely fine. Oh, hey! What do you know? Jack Lantern managed to follow us down here. Normally, they never managed to find this place. Because it's really not even that far down. But, hey, he found me. In all seriousness, guys, that's really it for the basement. So, let's continue. Next up is the upstairs of the lodge, which, as you can see, has even more Halloween decorations. And even more Crying Obsidian, and all the ores are corrupted, much like they were in the original Corrupted Future. 
But now there's a ton of cobwebs around it. And all of the bookshelves have been replaced with pumpkins. I don't know, I thought that would look cool. Anyway, with all that being said though, this room does look really, really cool. Uh, we also, of course, got this room over here as well. Which also looks really cool. There's a lot of Halloween decorations. And yes, we even got this as well. Which is really cool. Anyway, with all that being said, this room, though, has a lot of decorations. So, these ones weren't changed because, honestly, they didn't look that great. So, I left them as is. Anyway, it's pretty cool because there's even more pumpkins all around here, which also looks really cool. And, yes, the twisting vines are here as well because that was a part of the original design back then. And yeah, we got even more Halloween decorations up here. And then if we were to head up here to the attic, we can see even more Halloween decorations up here as well, which honestly look really, really cool as well. They honestly do look really cool. And some are kind of hidden. So that's cool. Anyway, with all that being said, that is it for the lot. I think we're gonna go to the theme park next. So, yeah, I'll meet you down there. Next up is the theme park, which as you can see, still of course has all of the Halloween prizes that we saw a few episodes back on the 13th. However, it mainly still retains the original corrupted future design. Just with, of course, more Halloween decorations, such as cobwebs covering all the entrances to the respective parts. And while I guess the Tantala Park was the only one I didn't get a chance to decorate, that's completely fine. I can just come back later to the party and do that. Also, so I wasn't thinking of doing it at the time, so that's also why. With that being said, though, uh, it's really cool. Anyway... All the parks are decorated as well, so allow me to show you them. First off, we got Roller Coaster Park right here, which is mainly just some minor Halloween decorations. Of course, with the addition of, of course, the Crying Obsidian on, you know, being the lights and on the ground as well. Just to light up the park a little more, because you may notice, like, nearly half this park is really dark. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And so, yeah, I did that mainly just to light up the park a bit. Actually... I did something for, like, all the parks, actually, for that. Anyway, it's mainly just some minor Halloween decorations, such as some cobwebs and pumpkins with just some slight crying obsidian on the ground. Outside of that, that's it. It is really cool, though. Next up is the game park, and I don't know if you saw this in Roller Coaster Park, but the fences are also been changed to cobwebs as well. This is the room itself, and it actually looks really cool. It's mainly just some more minor Halloween decorations with, of course, pumpkins and cobwebs and some slight crying obsidian, which replaces all the lights that used to be sea lanterns here and here as well. Now, this actually is extremely clever since this is mainly always obsidian, but this time it's been changed to crying obsidian for the sake of this theme. So this part, honestly, is probably the most clever part of the room. I also put some more Crying Obsidian on the ground, mainly because before I did that, the park looked pretty dark, like with like almost no lighting. So I did that as well to light up the park a bit, just like I did for Roller Coaster Park. So, yeah, looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, not too much to say for that, other than it honestly looks really cool. Next up is Pirate and Bullseye Park, which has just even more minor Halloween decorations, but with some crying obsidian to be the lights. Mainly because, like I just stated earlier, if I didn't place these down, the park would be extremely dark. Much like how literally the other half of the park is, like, literally right now. You may notice it is pretty dark. There's, like, almost no lighting here outside of the item frames. But... Yeah. Anyway, the target, as you may notice, though, is updated with Crying Obsidian. Like, literally over half of it is Crying Obsidian. 
because I thought it would look cool. So, yeah. Anyway, that's really cool. Now, genuinely outside of that, it's mainly just more minor Halloween decorations. Like, most of this room actually consists of cobwebs, actually. And this one's actually interesting. This room's actually kind of interesting, because uh, what's kind of funny about it is that there's, like, almost no light in here. Like, as you can see, it's pretty dark in here. It's like all there really is is just some crying obsidian to kind of light up the room. But most of it actually consists of redstone torches for the Lazy River ride here. Which is actually pretty crazy. Normally, the room is never this dark. But mainly, this is done just because, I don't know, makes it look spooky. Anyway, let's continue. Next up is the Medieval Park, which you can already see some medieval banners right here. But, it gets even more crazy when you get inside. Because as you can see, the medieval banner unlocks on October 26th, which is the Corrupted Halloween Medieval Banner. You know what I do the, uh, kind of, uh, find kind of funny? The original Halloween Medieval Banner unlocked on this very day five years ago in this very room and potentially this very spot. That's actually really freaking funny that now the one for this year unlocks like five days later. <laughs> nah, it's just kind of funny that I mentioned that. In all seriousness, the medieval park as you can see has been decorated fully for Halloween in mostly a corrupted themed way, which is actually really cool because, yeah, we got corrupted banners. Now, of course, the lighting in this room is quite dark, so this is what it actually looks like. Like, right here specifically, because, as you can see, the lighting in this room is quite dark. So, the lighting on the banners might be a bit darker than it actually is meant to look. But, anyway, uh, that's not too much of an issue. With all that being said, though, this honestly looks cool. And very similarly to the Pirate and Bullseye Park, the targets have also been updated the exact same way that we just saw earlier. Now, as for us going inside the room, we can see even more banners and more crying obsidian, where the entire carpet has been changed to exactly that. There's even more pumpkins along here, which is actually really, really cool. And you're probably going to be surprised, but even in here is updated. You know, the mob fighting room for, you know, um, this, like the battle arena room for this. Because normally, if I were to actually play these games, there would be a ton of mobs in this room, like behind these fences. But since there aren't right now, and I'm actually kind of surprised there isn't considering, you know, it's kind of dark in here. I think it might have to do with the redstone torches, but regardless. Yeah, it's actually decorated. This room rarely gets decorated. So it's probably a shock to see this decorated. Anyway, that's really cool. So, now we're going to move on to the top here, uh, the balcony, where, as you can see, we have even more decoration with even more banners. There's no pumpkins up here, surprisingly, but yeah, we got like a ton of banners here going all along here, finally making our way up to the balcony, and we finally get to see some jack-o'-lanterns. I'm not going to lie, there's not that many in this event, surprisingly. But yeah, as you can see, we got one right there and one right up there. Alongside just really just the remainder of the Halloween banners, which honestly do look really, really cool. And of course, who could of course forget the ones down here at the end of the roller coaster? Outside of that, guys, there is nothing else to say here, so let's move on to the next area. Next up is the water park, and I'm actually going to be quite honest with all of you. This was actually made last minute. Like, this was the last room I made before recording, because I realized I did not decorate the water park, and I was almost about to start filming, and then I realized, wait, the water park isn't decorated. Let me do that real quick. So, I did that, and it may not be much, because this was last minute. Oh, yeah. Get him out of here. I said, get out of here. There we go. Thank you, Jack Lantern, for starting to kill him off for me. <laughs> In seriousness, I know, again, it may not seem like much because this was last minute before I started recording the video. But, as you can see, we have a ton of 
pumpkins, and the lights still here from the light experiment, which is still pretty cool. And yeah, as you can see, the palm trees are the corrupted versions, with of course the moon, and of course this, you know, uh, skull as the background. Don't worry, I decorate it down here too. It's not much though. It's mainly just right here and right here with the palm, uh, you know, umbrellas. Mainly just lights and more pumpkins. That's really it. Well, that was probably the quickest room we ever toured in this part because we're already on the other side of the island. As you can see, we have even more crying obsidian as the path like the original Corrupted Future. The differences, however, apply, such as redstone torches and pumpkins covering the gardens, which are all really cool. There are some other minor differences, such as of course more pumpkins over here. And one difference I noticed from the original is that all of this over here was not decorated. So that is a massive difference. Yeah, like it was only just the path and this hole that was updated over here. The rest of this was not updated and I looked at the original. So I decided, let's change it up. Not to mention these lights are here too, so that's another thing that's different. Which is also really cool. And yes, of course, we still have the lights over here from the original light experiment. So do not forget about that. But outside of that, guys, the other side of the island does look really, really cool. And yeah, with all that being said, there is not much else to say about this. So we are going to move on to the next room now. Next up is the blacksmith shop, which as you can see, looks really, really cool. One major thing you might notice is that, like the lodge, the cobwebs replace the nether brick fences that used to be here in the original Corrupted Future design. But now there's a ton more of them here now. And even going on inside here, on the inside of this, there's even more pumpkins and cobwebs which also made the room look really, really cool, I'm not gonna lie, as you can see. And yeah, you can see a tiny bit of the resort down there. Nice. But outside of that, there's not much else to say. The roof is updated with more crying obsidian, which is really cool. And yeah, there's not much else to say outside of that. So, well that said, Let's move on to the resort. All right, so here we are at the resort. As you can see, there is a lot of crying obsidian because that's how it was in the original Corrupted Future. However, the major differences include the following, such as a ton of pumpkins and of course these lights. However, there is another free item right here, the Corrupted Resort Banner. However, this is not available until October 27th. Which is kind of ironic, considering that is ironically the resort anniversary. The sixth year anniversary to be exact. So that may or may not be why that's here. It's ironically only in six days that we'll be able to get this item. And yes, it is purposely released on this day, obviously in reference to that being the resort's anniversary day. Outside of that, the room still looks really, really cool. We mainly got everything here from the original Corrupted Future design with just even more pumpkins scattered around it, which is also really, really cool. Next up is the tallest mountain, which as you can see, also is pretty much decorated with a ton of pumpkins all over the place. And as you can see, we have another corruption hole to jump down. And much like the Underground Party Room 1, we have a ton of pumpkins down here in reference to Halloween. But, when you make your way to the end, you can see that the Corrupted Halloween shirt, which releases on October 22nd, is available right here. But we won't be able to collect this until October 23rd, because that's when the next episode is. Or at least that's not at least until when we'll be collecting it because that's when the next episode is. but it'll still release on the 22nd outside of that we can just get out of here now it's pretty cool though that we can ironically revisit the corruption holes and yeah now one of the main differences with this room is the uh mountain supplies um aren't here um 
unlike the original design, and have been replaced with all these pumpkins. So, that's a major difference. So, that's it for the Tallest Mountain. Just to clarify, the HQ is not decorated, so we can move on. Next up is the campsite. Well, actually, at least the pathway going to it. Because there's actually something really cool that I actually implemented for this party. Watch when we ring the bell. Yep, it actually turns on. And we can do the same to turn it off. Yep, that's right. We can turn it on and off by ringing this bell. Anyway, in all seriousness, let's keep it on just so we can tour this. As you can see, there is a little pumpkin on the item frame there, which is normally a pork chop. Anyway, as you can also see, the fences have been replaced with cobwebs, much like the lodge. Um, fences have been as well, alongside the blacksmith shop ones. And there's also free pumpkins down here. That's really cool. But that's nothing compared to the actual campsite itself, which as you can see, looks like this. As you can see, there are redstone torches literally everywhere. And from what I can remember, this wasn't even in the corrupted future, so this is all custom and all new exclusive to this party as an expansion. So that's really cool. Now we get even more rooms that feature this design. So now we're entering rooms that were not in the original and are now officially new to this party. So as you can see, we got Crying Obsidian as the logs. Yep, they've been changed to that because I thought they'd look cool. The light from the light experiment is still here, of course, lighting things up which is really cool. The target, like we've been seeing the last few times, are just like the way they've been designed for the last two times that we saw them in the Pirate and Bolze Park and Medieval Park, respectively. This is the last one, since this is the last one we can find around the island. With all that in mind, this also looks really cool. The dock has also been changed to Crying Obsidian as well. It's mainly just redstone torches with a ton of pumpkins scattered all over the place. And the ranch, though, is actually interesting, because there's obviously crying obsidian covering all the windows, or at least on the sides, but obviously the lights from the light experiment is still here as well. Heading inside the actual ranch itself, we can see even more pumpkins around here as well, which is actually really cool. And what's even cooler is that they actually replace the counters, the white counters that are normally here. With all that being said, Heading upstairs, as we can see, we can actually see another light that was actually never here before. Nope, this one right here was actually implemented for this party, because the room honestly felt really dark without it. But there's four more pumpkins up here as well, which also looks really cool. And that's really it for the ranch. There's not much else to say beyond that point, and heck, even going on the outside, the windows on the outside also look really cool as well, and now you can see the light properly, which lights up a few things. With all that being said though, guys, there is not much else to say about the campsite. We got a few more pumpkins over there, but to be quite honest, that's it for the campsite, and yeah, let's move on. So now we're basically entering new designs that are based off of this theme now, so that's pretty cool. Now we get to see all new stuff that's now based off this theme. But I think this is the last area to do that, so the next area we're going to go to goes back to using the designs that we already knew. Anyway, the dog park is decorated for this party, and we actually have a free item over here. The Corrupted Evil Cluck Banner. This will be available on Halloween though, so we have to come back in 10 days to be able to get that. However, this is actually the reason. First of all, Evil Cluck was the one responsible for the Corrupted Future happening in the first place in February, so that's one reason. And why I created this banner in the first place. But if you guys don't remember, Evil Cluck blew up the dog park five years ago on November 1st in preparation for the original Operation Legos Island. Lastly, Halloween is one of ha uh, Evil Cluck's favorite events here, so I also did this to commemorate that. Put those fun facts out of the way. We can continue touring the room. But, as you can see, heading inside the house, there's not too much for decoration outside of the Crying Obsidian. 
and heck, even going to the backyard itself, we can see that, hold on, there we go. Uh, we can see that all the flowers have been transformed into uh, dead bushes. Get out of here, creeper. In all seriousness, these have all been transformed into dead bushes, which is probably what I should have done in the flower room in the underground party room, if I'm not going to lie. But, as you can see, this light is lighting up this jack lantern and hammock just fine, which is actually really cool, honestly. Heading into the pool area over here, we can actually see uh, even more decoration. Mainly such as this light lighting up all the bushes and this uh and these four pumpkins alongside this light just lighting up the umbrellas itself with even more dead bushes in replacement of the blue flowers that used to be here we got even more pumpkins over here and even more pumpkins over here and even more over here thank god this place sure has a lot of decoration and yes there's even decoration in here too. and on the outside too You'll also notice that the familiar location house is updated as well. Heading on inside, we can clearly see even more Halloween decorations, with even more crying obsidian. But mainly, it's just some classic Halloween decorations with just a mix of crying obsidian, in reference to the corrupted theme. With all that being said, there is not too much else to say here other than all the windows for this are updated and I can show you from the outside as well. You'll notice that on the inside they are updated. However, there's a few more that I actually just remembered that I didn't update, such as these ones right here. But that shouldn't take long at all, mainly considering that's literally all I had to do. Now with that out of the way, you'll notice even more windows have been updated with the crying obsidian, like we just saw inside. There's also some pumpkins back here as well, mainly right there and there, alongside a few more hidden ones over there. With all that being said though, we can move on to the loft house now. Next up is the loft house, which I actually just went ahead and updated these to dead bushes instead of the flowers. Anyway, there's two pumpkins out here, and by heading inside, we can see even two more alongside more crying obsidian. Nothing in here though. However, on the upstairs of the house, we can see even more crying obsidian, and the little black uh, wall that used to be here has been also transformed into crying obsidian. But there's mainly just more pumpkins around here as well. Even in this tiny little room that I still can't remember what was actually in here IRL, yeah, there's two pumpkins there. Not to mention if we do go to the back end of the house, we can see even more pumpkins right here and right over here respectively, with the windows just being updated for crying obsidian. Even on the outside, speaking of Crying Obsidian, not only do we have five more pumpkins, scratch that, a good total of 10 more pumpkins out here. Scratch that. I think like 15 pumpkins out here, good God. But there are a ton of more Crying Obsidian, such as the white pillars being transformed into Crying Obsidian, alongside all the windows as well. Outside of that, we can move on now. Next up is the two small mountains, and now we're jumping back into familiar territory. As now, from this point forward, these should be recognizable designs just with Halloween decorations. As we're now done touring the rooms that were entirely new. With all that said though, the two small mountains does look great. We got a ton of pumpkins over here as well, alongside another light from the light experiment. With all that being said, that looks really cool. And up here as well also looks really cool with the lights still remaining from the light experiment. Which is really, really cool, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, I did not expect to put this many pumpkins up here though, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be personally honest. I don't think I need to put this many up here, but you know what? It looks freaking awesome, let's keep it. Okay, Jack Lantern's the only one up here, surprisingly. Where did the pretty free go? Eh, I'll probably show up eventually. Let's keep this tour going though. Next up is the mountain. I almost said two small mountains again. <laughs> In all seriousness, this is the mountain. And as you can see, we have another free item right here, being the Corrupted Wizard Pants. This will unlock on October 29th. So in the next eight days, we'll be able to claim that. And fun fact, that's actually a costume you can get in this party, which is actually really cool. So we'll be able to claim that towards the end of the party, or at least starting in the second week. Outside of that, we got a ton of pumpkins over here, 
which are all really, really cool. And the subway in here is also updated too, which also looks really cool. Ah, oh, I guess that's not updated, but that's fine. But all that being said though, guys, the counter once again, uh, the little white counter here has been transformed into pumpkins, much like the port one. With all that said, we got the light here still shining up here. It looks great. And now we're gonna move on to the actual room itself, which, as you can see, looks like this. So one major difference with this room is that in the original, it was all gray, as you can see. Now, as you can see, that has been removed and transformed back to the normal brick blocks that you guys are normally used to seeing in this room. Mainly because, just to clarify, that's actually how it was supposed to look in the original. I just didn't have enough time to remove the gray parts. So, now you're seeing what it was actually supposed to look like. Minus all the Halloween decorations, of course. With all that said, everything else remains in Which, as you can see, looks really, really cool. And not only that, but upstairs also looks really cool too. There are a ton of pumpkins here as well in this room. It honestly looks really cool. And the lighting also in here uh, looks amazing. But we're not done here. We also still have the basement to check out. Which, by the way, over here, we actually have October 23rd's item. The Corrupted Halloween Pants. This is available, like I just said, right here on October 23rd. Literally in the next episode. And you'll also notice that it is in the exact same spot that the Corruption Restorer was in Opera Snickles Island 2024. Or at least the one that respawned uh, Valentine after Evil Cluck made her uh, disappear from existence. You might remember that. This is literally in the same spot as that. This is the only Corruption Hole that managed to actually, you know, be reversed back. And this is how it looks now. Looks great. With all of that really being said, Let's move on to the last area in this whole park. The village! But first, we got the subway. As you can see, once again, the white counter has been transformed into pumpkins. But there's mainly a ton of cobwebs with the lights still going on and off from the light experiment. With all that being said, as for the village itself, it actually looks like this. Which actually looks really freaking cool. So here is the coffee shop, as you can see, we got a ton of crying obsidian all over the place, much like the original Corrupted Future design, but now there's cobwebs and more pumpkins scattered all over the place, which is actually really cool. Honestly, again, I'm not gonna lie, Cool Get Ready Free was not wrong. This design just works so well with these decorations. Next up is the library, which as you can see, has not that many decorations. It's mainly just more cobwebs and more pumpkins, with so much crying obsidian all across the room. It honestly looks really, really nice. Next up is the first house. As you may notice, there is actually one minor difference. Both of the beds used to be black in the original. However, now, uh, I did not mean to do that, <laughs> um, they have been transformed, at least one of them has been transformed into an orange bed, in obviously respective to Halloween, of course. There's some cobwebs all over the place with just two pumpkins in here. Not too much beyond that. Next up is the second house. Like I stated just now, one bed has been transformed into an orange bed in respect to Halloween, because these used to both be black beds. There's more cobwebs all over the place, with more pumpkins and a ton more corrupted decorations which honestly look really nice. Next up is the hotel, which as you can see, looks actually completely different from the original design all the way back in the Corrupted Future, as it was originally its original hotel design, just with the Crying Obsidian. Now it's the Bigger of the Season 8 design, but with these decorations. And now it's all Halloween themed, which honestly looks really cool. And heck, even back here, the, uh, the little diary room thing, also has Crying Obsidian as well to reflect the darkness, which is actually really cool. So yeah, this one is completely different. Oh, and yes, we do have the cobwebs on the roof like normal. Lastly but not least is the clothes shop, the final room in the whole party. Guys, I'm not even gonna even lie here. The only difference with this entire room 
is just the pumpkins. Literally, everything else in this room outside of the pumpkins are exactly the same as the original Corrupted Future design. The only difference is literally just the pumpkins I put around the room. Yep, I'm literally not even freaking kidding about that. And he died. Well, there goes that. Oh, and one last thing. The item for October 30th is the Corrupted Wizard Shoes, but on the other side, we have the Corrupted Wizard Wand. And guys, that wraps up Legos Island Halloween 2024 to showcase in the last remains of the village right here. Because I didn't get to showcase it all properly. But yeah, what do you guys think of Legos Island Halloween 2024? Honestly, this is honestly super freaking cool. And yes, you can even still see the light down there from the light experiment with the pumpkin on top. Honestly, I don't even know if this is even better than the last year's design for Evil Clucks Haunted Island. Does anybody remember that? I didn't even know. Comment down below if you think so. With all that being said, guys, I will see you all in the next episode on Wednesday, October 23rd, where we're going to obviously collect the next two Halloween items and start the first skyscraper challenge. Haunted Hotel Challenge, sorry. See you next time.